awesome. I like this rug on the wall. It's like that scene from Inception, except shit's the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the same. I think Sigmund Freud just wanted to fuck his mom, but he turned it around on us instead. <laughs> He was like, you guys want to do it too, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I've never wanted to fuck my mom. Not even like in passing. <laughs> no. Where she walks by and I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's never happened. Every time she walks by, I'm like, that's my mom. <laughs> and I love her. I only tell that joke to plug my mom. Uh, yeah, it's a Freudian slip. There's. <laughs> I love to see what I do. <laughs> a lot of first time comics, especially like Duke comics, they always come up. They talk about like the first time they had sex. It's always hilarious. Uh, they always refer to it as getting lucky. I always say that. First time I got lucky was with my dad at the casino. <laughs> oh. We fucked. <laughs> I did a show last night, my parents were there, and I opened with those motherfuckers. <laughs> Made direct eye contact with them, too. <laughs> I was on mushrooms with a drive through at Starbucks the other day. <laughs> I was placing my order. I was doing really good. I was just talking to this cognitive box. <laughs> like it's there, but it's not there. It responds. And then I had to move on to the real people. That's when shit gets serious. I pull up and she's like, did you have the two copies? And I was like, yeah, did the box tell you that? Then she hit me with this question. She was like, so you alone in there? Or are you taking these coffees home? And I was not prepared for that whatsoever. <laughs> I had to look around in my car like, yeah, I'm alone. <laughs> and then it hit me, I'm so alone. <laughs> yeah, that joke gets sad. <laughs> not everything's funny. <laughs> Did anyone else think Walt Disney hated Jewish people? Yes. I thought that my whole life. Someone told me that in elementary school, and that's how most things I believe start. Someone tells me, and I'm like, that is true. And I thought that until the other day I looked it up, and it's not true. It's just a myth that got way out of proportion. So now I got nothing in common with Walt Disney. <laughs> I can tell that joke, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Took a lot of drugs in high school, if you couldn't tell. Uh, I did meth once on accident. Uh, yeah, I did on accident for two years. <laughs> Time flies when you're stealing from your parents. Uh, I took a lot of Adderall. Uh, I just found out recently I was taking it wrong, though. Like, you're supposed to take it while you're studying so you can absorb information quicker. But I would take it like 30 minutes before my test. <laughs> <laughs> so all that would do is just make me really focused on failing my test. <laughs> Each question I'd be like, yep, yeah, definitely don't know that one. On to the next one, not a clue. <laughs> Turn it in first, that's what matters. <laughs> it doesn't. And then I moved on to ecstasy to help me learn. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh no. Uh, I took the ACT. First time I took the ACT, I got a 22. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, very average. Same reaction my parents had, silence. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to take it a second time, but I grew up Catholic and my dad signed me up, so I'm going to take it a second time. And uh, it's the night before the test. I'm at CC's Pizza hanging out with my buddies, just doing what you do, blowing powdered sugar on one another. <laughs> Those brownies, they're so good. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting at the table, my friend leans over and he's like, hey, I've got some ecstasy. Do you want to buy some ecstasy? And I was like, yes, I do. 
but I have the ACT tomorrow. Can I take it tomorrow as like a celebration kind of thing, you know, because high school's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, this is the pill kind. It's going to go way quicker. you got to get it now or else it'll be gone. And I was like, okay. I'll be a responsible 17-year-old. I'll, I'll get it now. I'll put it in my pocket. And I'll save it for after the test. Oh, no. And then my friend jokingly says to me, you should take it right before the ACT. <laughs> and I want to be liked. <laughs> so I did. I took it at 7.30, the test started at 8, and I wanted it to be kicking in as soon as I walked through the doors. It was December and I was sweating profusely. <laughs> uh, I couldn't fill in the dots because my hands were shaking so bad. And then I went and hung out with my dad. Stuff you do on ecstasy. <laughs> and I completely forgot about the test until a few weeks later, the results come in the mail, and I got a 25 on the ACT. Yeah. <laughs> Just proves that the D.A.R.E. program is a crock of shit. <laughs> I remember sitting in D.A.R.E. when I was a kid, just thinking like, man, I'm never going to do drugs. I'm never going to do those things. Then you fast forward 16 years and I'm using two bottles of Xanax as Maracas just playing along to the dark side of the <laughs> <laughs> Like, what happened? <laughs> you guys ever buy drugs online? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you go on the dark web. Uh, Fox News will scare you and make you think like the dark web is where you buy a hitman to kill your wife, which is true, but you keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> you scroll past that, you click the link for drugs, go on there. I bought a BK MDMA, which is a form of ecstasy that you can smoke. Usually that's a standing ovation. <laughs> I bought it from the Netherlands. I was like, ooh, I've never heard of that place before. <laughs> I thought it was like Transylvania or something, you know, vampires. Turns out it exists. <laughs> I'm not smart. Uh, I ordered it. It was the most patient my drug addiction had ever been because it takes about four to six weeks to come in the mail. So every day I would just sit by my mailbox like, any debt, any debt. <laughs> and one day I come home from school I was in high school, I got a ship to my parents. I'm not gonna take the fall, I'll let Jim get fucked. <laughs> I get home, and there's an envelope, and it's to me, and it's from some electric company I had never heard of before. It was called like Independent Electric or something like that. And uh, it had a cute little logo on the top, I thought it was adorable. I go to my room, and I was like, what is this? I open it up, and inside there's a blank sheet of paper, and I open that sheet of paper up, and there's a smaller sheet of paper that just like flips down, and there's just a bag of drugs hanging down at the bottom of it. <laughs> so that was a fun day. <laughs> I spent five bitcoins on that day, so that was a fun day. Uh, a year and a half ago, that would have been a retirement, but it was a fun day. <laughs> I want to get pulled over by the cops just to see if I still got it. You know? <laughs> I've been pulled over on ecstasy like three times. Every time I just get the same excuse. I'm like, oh, I missed my turn. And they're like, oh, we're going to church, right? And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> I'm an altar boy. <laughs> I played a lot of punk music when I was younger. Um, Played a lot of bands. One of my first bands, I actually named after my baby brother. It was really cute. Named after my baby brother. We were called Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's like early Metallica, thrashy. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's Oh. Can I do an impression for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. This is this is gay goofy. <laughs> Gorsh, Maxi. I didn't know you had such a big dick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only impression I can do. <laughs> but I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <yeah. laughs> I'm going to pitch it to a TV show. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I can write a script about that. <laughs> Just Goofy getting fucked. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the next film. Fucking Polly Shore is there just watching. <laughs> <laughs> He's like leaning tower of Jizza. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's stupid. <laughs> Shout out to this place for doing it. PBRs or I would remember the name, but <laughs> that's gone out of my brain. Um, search parties aren't as fun as they sound. <laughs> I show up with a six pack and suddenly I'm the asshole. <laughs> like, sorry your daughter went missing, dude. I came here to party and go on a scavenger hunt. Let's do this shit. <laughs> There were flyers all over town. <laughs> Everyone in the county got the text message. Those Amber Alerts? God. I hate those things. You ever be driving around and you see like a lost dog sign stapled to a pole hastily, and you're like, man, my heart hurts so bad for that poor creature. It must be so scared to be out in the world alone without its owner. And then at that same exact moment you get an Amber Alert message on your phone and you're like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> trying to feel bad for a creature with big eyes. I don't need to be reminded about evil. <laughs> I went to Catholic school. I feel it all the time. <laughs> Every time I mention going to Catholic school, someone always thinks it's funny to ask me if I got molested. <laughs> and I didn't. I just have horrible guilt about never being molested. <laughs> it's a good Catholic joke. I told that to my priest. Uh, oh, no. I went to church one time in elementary school and uh, they asked me if you want to pray for anything, my dog had just died. And I was like, I, I want to pray for my dog that just died this weekend. And the priest just looked at me and he was like, dogs don't have souls. And then he moved on. <laughs> <laughs> that fucked me up. <laughs> for a long time. I had to sit there like, dogs are better than people. How the fuck do people have souls but dogs don't? Doesn't make any sense. There's no joke there. Fuck people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't like them. I went to the gas station and they had a sign by the cashier and it was like, Our, this cashier is hearing disabled, she reads lips, so just make eye contact with her and speak very enunciated and she'll understand, which is terrible for me because I think I have autism and I cannot make eye contact with her. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like looking around like above her, like maybe if my mouth is just at her eye level, she'll get it. <laughs> she did great. I did worse than she did. <laughs> I started to forget how to listen. That's how being deaf works, right? You just forget how to listen. You just stop listening, and then one day you're like, fuck. Just in your head. Or you say it out loud, but it sounds weird. I can make fun of the deaf, they're not going to hear this. Unless they feel the vibration. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> That's like a superpower, that one. Uh, where am I at on time? I don't even know. You're good. I'm good. Fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm trying this new, like, self confidence thing. It's not going very well. <laughs> I said, fuck yeah, I am, and I didn't even believe it. <laughs> In my head, I was like, I don't know about that. <laughs> my dad hasn't hugged me in years. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's not a joke, I just can't afford therapy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took too much CBD the other day, I just felt okay with everything. <laughs> It was super weird. I'm a person that thrives on complaining. 
So I just don't take CBD anymore. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. If like my day goes fine and I have no complaints, it sucks for me. <laughs> I got nothing to talk about at that point. You know, like if everyone likes me, that's not cool. <laughs> that's not fun. If I piss off a hearing disabled woman at come and go, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> but I fucked that up. Um, I was doing a show in Springfield not too long ago, and uh, I was about to go on. I was on the patio, uh, smoking a cigarette. Uh, a stranger walks up to me. I don't know him. First thing he says, tweaking, huh? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> and I just had to explain that this is just how I am. <laughs> Which is an uncomfortable conversation to have with a grown man. You know? Where you're like, sometimes God makes people different than other people. <laughs> sometimes people's mothers do drugs while they're pregnant with, with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a show and uh, I was standing outside once again. I, I, I stand outside so much for someone who does not <laughs> like the outdoors. <laughs> I'm not made for it. I wear long sleeves all year round, baby. <laughs> I weigh 120 pounds. If there's a breeze, I'm chilly. <laughs> Midgets, they don't count. <laughs> um, uh, midget porn is society's most literal shortcoming. <laughs> it's, that's an old joke. It's stupid. Just, just, anyways, I was at a show, standing outside. Uh, one of the comics had an oil pen. And I like smoking weed, so I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, he hands it to me. I've hit an oil pin or two before. I know they get clogged really easy. So I just ripped it as hard as I could. <laughs> oh, no. And I exhaled. And when I exhaled, I coughed. And when I coughed, my upper back started hurting. <laughs> and I was like, that's new. <laughs> Never had that happen before. And I kind of ignored it. You know, it's a Catholic thing. You're like, I'm not dead, so I'm not going to the hospital. And uh, I ignored it. I was drinking. It kept getting worse and worse. I went inside. I was like, I'll just keep drinking. That'll numb the pain, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting there. It keeps getting worse. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go home. I just need to lay down. And uh, I'm walking out. And then the host runs out. And he's like, hey, you're going up right now. You need to go up there. And I was like, OK. So I go up there. And I have like one of the best sets I've ever had in my life. I'm killing up there. I'm riffing. On a new level of comedy that I won't ever be at again. Uh, <laughs> except I had this new quirk where after every punchline I would go, oh. <laughs> which was my brain going, I think I'm dying. <laughs> I get off stage. Um, I just go immediately home. I'm like hobbling out to my car. And uh, I get home. Once again, not going to the doctor. I get home. I can barely walk to the bed. My girlfriend's like, you should go to the doctor. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I wake up the next morning. I go to work. I work with my dad. I can barely breathe. My dad's like, you should go to the doctor. And I'm like, yes, sir. So I go to the doctor. Uh, go to urgent care. Uh, I take an x-ray and they're like, cool, we're going to look at this x-ray for four hours, so we'll be right back. So I'm just sitting in this room for a while. They give me a breathing treatment. I don't even know what that is. I'm just breathing into a tube. And uh, they come back and they're like, oh, this is why your back hurts. Your lung collapsed. <laughs> oh. But that set was so good, you guys. <laughs> so good. So if anyone has an oil pen, I can hit right now. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Went to the hospital not too long ago because my balls were hurting, <laughs> which is odd. Um, I went there. Uh, they were going to do an ultrasound, so ladies, I feel you. Um, I had to go to another room, 
and they're just like, yeah, just take your, your pants and your boxers off and you can leave your shirt on, which is somehow even worse than just being completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> it's somehow more humiliating because my upper waist just looks gigantic and then I have barely any legs. <laughs> it's like a snowman's arms are my legs. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting in this chair, just got my legs spread, just hanging out. And, uh, this 75-year-old lady walks in, and she's like, all right, I'm going to be performing your, uh, your ultrasound today. And uh, she starts pouring jelly all over my balls and my dick. And uh, here's the treatment part. They don't tell you that that shit feels good. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Oh, God. It felt amazing. <laughs> and she's over there just like, how's your day? And I'm like, not bad. <laughs> really not that bad. I was like, I think I'm getting a new fetish. <laughs> she, had, she had the little, what, I don't even, I'm not a doctor, I don't know what it's called, the thing that touches you. <laughs> uh, she was like, do you want to hear what the blood sounds like down there? And I was like, fuck yeah. And uh, it sounds like the ocean, y'all. I had the ocean in my balls. It was a power. I felt like a new man. It was great. Nothing was wrong. I just sat in the car for too long. That's all. They're like, you could have waited like two more days and you'd be fine. And I was like, I know. I got to judge a high school debate tournament. That was really fun. Um, it's me, so I showed up like really high. And I also showed up like pretty drunk, which otherwise would be a crime, but I was invited. <laughs> it's like a vampire, you know, they can't come in unless you let them. So I was invited. I, they give you a judging sheet. I just started taking out my high school experience on these kids. There was a girl in there. I was like, she looks like she would call me gay. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> that was fun. I didn't get asked to come back the next day. <laughs> they were like, we, we got more people tomorrow, so it's fine. I think they were lying. <laughs> so, I'm trying to think of a joke to end on. But it's not going very well. Have a great night, guys. Thank you so much for watching.